Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial. Um, gonna double check to make sure that we're recording this time. The character you see on the screen is a character I actually um, created with the intention of uh, creating it for a video tutorial. I actually made this through a video tutorial, except the fact that it wasn't a video, I wasn't recording. Um, however, um, the idea is that we're going to create this character you see, but I'm going to start from scratch and we're going to create the character again together. But um, I'm going to do a couple of things different to um, how I initially started this. This model that you see here uh, is fully modeled, but it's not unwrapped. What we're going to do is um, sort of walk towards the unwrapping of the model as we go on as well in order to make um, some stages easier for ourselves later on okay the idea is that you have to create a character um, what I did do was um, come up with a couple of sketches of how I'm going to do it I had uh, this alien character that I was intending to create there was this cat and there was this um, turtle which is basically what you see roughly over here um, I did make the alien as well, um, imported it into Unreal Engine so that you could have a look at this and have this for reference. Um, the idea is that we're going to create uh, that, take into Modbox, create AMM inclusion textures, diffuse textures, and um, hopefully a bunch of other textures that we can take into Unreal Engine and use this as our playable character. So let's get started. Um, I have a couple of concepts here. This is this is what I came up with, and I did with um, Google search, and I saw this as well, which was quite similar to my concept. So that's the idea of what we are going to roughly going to create, and that is what I have done over here. So we're going to cre recreate this again from scratch. Um, looking at the shell of the, um, the turtle, it's pretty much a um, half the sphere really now we could go with the sphere but the problem we would have with the sphere is it will become difficult to unwrap I mean it's a bit tricky to unwrap uh, spheres um, so what I like to do instead of doing that I like to go box get a cube make sure it's not a box and it's a cube so all the length width height everything is the same and go ahead and create one and give it some subdivision in this case I'll go with eight by eight by eight what we're going to do here we're going to unwrap this box first then turn it into a sphere and then unwrap it again um, this then we will have a unwrap sphere because if you were to look at this uh, the way I've made this that that was made with having a half, half a sphere and it's actually not a sphere it's a box that was turned into a sphere same with this um, the head same with the eyes and same with the shoes so what I'm going to do is select this and we're going to go ahead and unwrap this box let's open up the UV editor and move everything out so yeah there we go it's got the two sides together so that's fine and um, let's go ahead and um, connect these or separate these from each other uh, I'm gonna just select turn off um, ignore back facing deselect that run a planar mapping on this oops on the appropriate axis so that this becomes a full screen you should all know how to unwrap by now move that aside select the other ones deselect this side maybe run a planar mapping on it best fit will also work just fine uh, select the top part and deselect that and go ahead and do one of the Z for this take that out okay so we have six planes now which will present this at the, 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 the box I'm gonna go ahead and select one of these loops and see what they oops don't want to move any of those see what they match up so this edge matches with that so do a custom stitch to that this one turn this off actually this one lines up with that so that we can do a custom stitch on that and this side lines up with this so we could double click on this select the loop and do a custom stitch there as well let's go full screen here um, let's move this up okay turn that back off uh, what we have we have this which matches up with that and we have this which matches up with this so them two can go together oh, that's with that's 
might be odd. Let's have a look. So we can see that the top side of this matches with the top side of the other island. That should not be the case. This should be mirrored, of course, not from this angle, but from the other. So that should fix it now. If I was to double click on this, we can see that this matches with that and this matches with this. So that's really good. We could go ahead and select this and stitch. Why did it keep stitching that to that? Let's have a look at where this green line here is doing here. So line it up with this. Okay. This is really strange. Can I weld these green points here? So look. Ooh, weld. It does not weld, but why does this attach to that? I love the um, problems you get in live tutorials before you rehearse, rehearse them and try them out. So that goes there. Okay, so let's go and grab these edges and say custom stitch. Still doesn't do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this and mirror it the other way as well. See what happens. Yeah, that fixed it. There you go. So the mirroring was off. And that also does the same thing. So this also needs to be mirrored. Excellent. So now I could double click on this and say stitch. There we go. Excellent. So we have a box which is stitched and it's unwrapped. So we can click on that. That goes in there. Excellent. And we can convert this to the poly. So this box is unwrapped. However, it's a box. It's not a sphere. So we're going to go to the modify panel, drop down link, and we are going to click on or choose uh, Spherify and there we go that will give us a sphere uh, I will just isolate this so that we don't see that at all excellent so now over here we can see that even when I render it we have some um, problem because of the smoothing groups that's fine we can always put a smooth modifier on it hit auto smooth convert it to an editable poly and voila that's that okay Let's change the color of that so it becomes slightly easier to see and follow. Excellent. Um, so this requires to be unwrapped again because now it's a sphere. It's not. It's not a box. If I was to open up the UV editor here and show you the checkered pattern on this, you know it actually looks fairly decently okay. Um, there's a bunch of different things we could try. We could select the whole thing and just say do a quick peel on it and it will try its very best to go ahead and make sense of what's what's there um, the other way we could do it we could try pelt mapping and as i said we can try i never said it would work uh, so look uh, start pelt stop pelt don't come into this no idea what's happening there okay let's just go ahead and use uh, quick peel and quick peel peel again. Can we go to tools, relax, start, relax? Yeah. The, the problem was it was really um, sort of, uh, it had different sizes throughout the thing. <clears throat> and <laughs> I know what you're thinking. The joy of the read. But anyways, there we, we have a fairly decent unwrapped, so I'm gonna just <laughs> close this for the sake of decency. And we have a sphere, which is unwrapped. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and end isolation here. Okay, so we have this. I'm gonna that's this unwrapped sphere. I'm gonna leave that there. Every time I want to uh, use a sphere, I'll just create a copy of this shift uh, shift drag uh, from that so the shell starts with the half of the bottom being missing so I'm going to convert this to an editable poly which already is actually so I'm going to go ahead and delete half of the um, the sphere the graphic modeling tool can go away for now then what I'll probably do is add a FFD modifier on it and try to manipulate its sh uh, shape a little bit uh, the for example, the uh, front of it, I will, um, hang on, oh, front, okay, uh, 
can you please disappear thank you just move that up a little bit and um, what I'll do is on top of that I'll probably put a 4x4 actually what I'll probably do is go back and not use a 3x3 put a 5x5 five five. so put my own numbers in there which is 5x5x5 five by five by five. I get the control points pull these up excellent and what I can also do is probably move this here and I'm thinking it would probably make I mean I really like the shape of that so it would make sense for us to put another FFT on this maybe 3x3 three three, and maybe just pull the backside back a little bit and bring the that one forward maybe scale them slightly looking at it from the back I could actually let's move the whole thing to the top first I could uh, probably go into the modify panel and just uh, give it a r rather random shape I'm trying to achieve something like what I did before but of course everything can be completely brand new there we go that looks that looks fairly decent now just in case like the character jumps up in the air and um, we see the we see from the bottom of this we don't want this to be hollow so what I'm going to do is go ahead and cap this and I have a horrible um, end gun here because we're going to take this uh, model into mod box we want to make sure that everything is either a triangle sorry we want to make sure everything's a quad no triangles no angles no nothing double check to make sure that I'm still recording yep it's been 11 minutes into this and we're recording good what I'm going to do go into edit poly make sure this is edit poly in the graphic modeling tool expand it so I can see the selection and go to the modeling tab and I should actually be seeing some of these icons which I don't unfortunately I think I'm having a problem with my 3ds Max. Let's close that. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to get the cut tool and I'm going to cut from there all the way to here. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. That's a lie. I am not going to do that. The reason is what I have done is I altered one side of the, the um, turtle, but I didn't do the same to the other side because I want to make sure everything's exactly the same thing. I want to go ahead and look for uh, symmetry and make sure that we have the same looking um, half on both sides excellent so now I could go and create uh, my lines I've automatically created that middle point in there for me which is really good um, I don't know why or when this line was created so let's get rid of that I think I did it when I was doing the cut okay so let's go to cut and let's go make sure we only get uh, quads I don't want to connect that point to that point because that will give me two triangles on there so I'm going to go from the next point on put those there go from there to there from there to there right click from there to if you can see it correctly there I'm just going to continue doing this throughout the entire turtle oh actually I think that was a very bad choice. I think I missed one. So from there to there. Why do I have a feeling that this is somehow? not going according to plan okay because I'm gonna stop here and not continue from there uh, the reason is we are having a, a huge gaps here uh, the, the edges aren't moving correctly what I'm gonna do I want to select each of these and I'm gonna go ahead and do a constraint on the edge so that I can't freely move the word around I can only move it on the edge and I want to just push these back up in order to make room for the new vertices that we're about to create I don't know for why for some reason this is moving back a lot so we want to just manually push this into place uh, same with these ones put that back into place put this also back into place and let's go ahead and get the cut tool again and go from that point to this point it's still cutting I think your angle really is important how you look at it in order to make sure that you don't uh, cut through the edges that you already have so best bet is to look at it from the bottom view and keep going oops uh, okay 
one, two, three. I can do this one more time, I think. Yep. Okay. So now that I've done this, what I want to do, I want to make sure that everything is at least. Uh, so everything's a quad. So I'm going to go to polygon mode, selection. Give me everything more than four. Oops. Oh, I have a few polygons which are more than four, and that is not good. And that's because I was very cur uh, careless when I was clicking on these. Uh, there was another one here. There you go. There you go. So let's turn that off. Again, give me everything more than four. Absolutely nothing. Give me everything less than four. Absolutely nothing. Give me everything which is four. That becomes everything, which is really, really good. Excellent. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and um, get the neck to come out from the uh, the body. So what I'm going to do is I want to select these two polygons, and I'm going to go ahead and insert this a little tiny bit. Now this because we have created these new um, sort of polygons, it does mean that we have to go ahead and change our unwrapping a little bit. But because we've already unwrapped it once, it will hopefully become much easier to do. Again, I want to make sure that I'm uh, constraint uh, this constraints is set to edge and I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this look a little bit round so like that that will do that will do fine but again I want to do a symmetry on this okay before I do that I want to say effect center to object center to object and then do a symmetry so that the symmetry is in place excellent convert that to a little poly Fantastic, excellent. So now we can go ahead and select that, oops, or them two, poly them two polygons and delete that, excellent. What we can do is grab this and bring it up, shift then drag this out. Now, of course, this is a little bit off. Um, so what we're gonna do is make sure that everything here is set um, next to each other and then it's nice and neat. I don't wanna, I wanna make sure that I'm no longer snapping to constraints um, so that's the bottom part that has to come here uh, and them to probably have to come around here to make this look slightly better oh, that's slightly down no one's gonna see that okay excellent now going back to this concept of mine which is this one that it's gonna have a very narrow big um, long neck of course it's not realistic at all but that's the idea so what i'm going to do is shift and drag this and put it and maybe just for the beginning i'll create a bit of a curve here myself manually and put that there maybe select actually i like that so i'll leave that there it is for them i'll select that shift and drag this over here but we want to create some sort of divisions between or throughout the neck. Then what we want to do is go ahead and select that up to around there. Get a FFD by say four by four. Just move these around a little tiny bit um, in order to just curve this into place. Um, Let's have a look. Um, something like that, roughly. Yeah, there we go. Okay, excellent. Come back to the default poly. So there we go. There's the neck of our um, thing. I'm actually not going to fix this part because I think it roughly looks funny being a little bit jagged. Excellent. So now what we need is the head that's going to go for it. I'm going to end isolation. If you were to look at the head of the other turtle that I made, um, also consider the fact that he has the, uh, the, the bottom uh, lip and the teeth sort of popping out. Um, I'm going to create that head shape. And I already have a sphere which is unwrapped. So I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to get a copy of that somewhere around here. And I want to go ahead and I'm going to try to recreate something similar to what I've done here. Now, of course, in this one, it's got a very flat um, FFB by 4, let's say. It's got a very flat face over there. So I'm going to do that. Then what I'm going to do is maybe take these ones up and bring the other ones slightly further down. Uh, bring the head a little bit higher, make it a little bit bigger. 
at the back. Um, it'll probably have to be slightly. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually put another F of D on three by three on top because here I want to affect less areas of the head. So look, looking at it from the front, just push that a little bit higher. Looking from the left hand side, could push pull that back a little bit, push that in. Something like that. I mean, of course, it's going to look slightly different to what I did before, but it doesn't matter. Um, maybe make it make his jaw a little bit wider here, and just push that a bit up. Excellent. Maybe that looks a little bit too sharp. Okay, that'll do. So the idea is I'm going to come back to, to a little poly. What I'm going to do is go ahead and create the effect at the bottom of the mouth. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select the polygons that are going to represent the bottom of the mouth. And I'm going to go ahead and detach those. Detach to a different object. And then, surprisingly, attach them back again. Where they were supposed to join I will go and weld those is 30 vertices if I say weld this is 15 excellent I'm, I'm gonna go select those again except the, um, the very last set of polygons and push this in a little tiny bit and maybe make it a slightly smaller I'm gonna select the border here the loop and just pull that up and make it smaller so it doesn't pop out of the mouth of the face same with the other one just select that and just shift and drag the whole loop in and make it slightly smaller so that these points from this side for example don't stick out so let's have a look are we still recording it'd be very bad if we weren't yep 22 minutes funny actually every 11 minutes I'm checking good and just want to make this part of the mouth slightly more Round. I just want to pull that up a little bit, and I could go ahead and get a ring here and connect that. And again, just play around with that a little bit to make this look slightly smoother rather than being so harsh. Then, what we're going to do is go ahead and attach this to the body. So, let's go ahead and align that to that in all axes. So it roughly jumps there, and that's meant to go over here. Okay. Um, what I'll actually do is I'll select this and I'll isolate it for a second, and I'll grab that top part. Maybe do a bit of a soft selection uh, by edge distance and rotate this that way so that it can fit the head a little bit easier. And let's have a look at this from the left viewport. Grab those vertices, move them around a little bit. I think that will probably fit much better. And isolation, turn off soft selection. And isolation. Okay. So where let's before we attach them, let's figure out where the head is going to go. So the head then or the neck. The neck's gonna go into let's say into a middle polygon. What I'll actually to here is that I will go ahead and so look we could put it in there what I'll do is I'll grab this one vert and I'll chamfer it in order to make some room now one thing which is very essential is to make sure that because this is the link between the two assets um, we want to make sure that we have the same amount of edges so if I go back to the main body itself I can see that I have six edges on this cap over here on the other hand I of course this um, chamfering this uh, vert only gave me four so I need two more there but I'm gonna think who's gonna which vert is gonna get uh, welded to which vert so that them two can connect it to each other that one and that one 
and this one and this one can get together I need two additional ones for these two that are gonna run down so what I'm gonna have to do is ring these two and connect them then I could go ahead and connect them two together and them two together actually that is not true because I actually want a new set of polygon um, edge to be there so I'm gonna go back to my cut tool and I'll go from the edge to here and in fact because I want the same thing on the other side again just do a symmetry on it and because the symmetry is jumping that means that my pivot point is not at the center of the object so if I put that to the center and then say do a symmetry on it then it should work fine I can convert it to an ideal poly uh, we couldn't care less about that edge that it created in the middle uh, this is gonna get deleted anyway um, so that's good um, the only problem that we have now is does this head contain anything more than four edges and yes it does this area those four polygons are more than four edges so we have to come up with a solution for that um, if this edge was to continue it would help for this so let's go ahead and grab this and this ring those ring okay don't ring those uh, ring these two maybe did that work yes it did connect those and then I could hopefully go back to my modeling tool get the cut tool and go from there to here and go from there to here now let's check one more time selection more than four now we have two which are these so if this line continued the problem would be solved again so let's just select this one and say ring and connect and we need a connection that flows through either I could do that or I could just not do that if I was to just go ahead and target weld this to this that should solve the problem out um, over here actually I could probably just oh, I need those so um, okay let's go drag these out a little bit uh, constrain them on the edge so that we can make room for this Oops, okay, now I don't want to be on edge. Excellent. And down. Now, just to make sure that everything's correct, let's go ahead and do one more symmetry on this to make sure that both sides are exactly the same. And I'm gonna go ahead, select this main body, and it doesn't matter which one you select really, and attach the head to it, and move the head back. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and actually bring the head a little tiny bit down let's go ahead and connect the neck to the head so target weld that again goes there if I can see these correctly that goes there that goes there now remember for this target weld to work you shouldn't have a polygon on either of the connections for the neck or the head excellent so there we go that's our head getting attached um, I'm not going to bother showing you how to create the teeth because it was fairly simple is um, I can actually just drag these out and clone them into an object and put their pivot points oops to their center and align this with the character Okay, I'm not going to bother showing you how it is, I'm just going to show you how it looks. It's basically a box subdivided into a few different polygons and then I used FFD to slightly bend it. Uh, and I'm going to just go ahead and place this into mouth, there you go. In this case it probably has to be slightly bigger because it seems like this turtle has a bigger head compared to the other one. Looks like a really mean turtle. <laughs> it has a really wide jaw. It looks like um, Stewie from Family Guy. That's uh, I'll keep it as it is. This one. I don't know which. I don't know which one I like better. The one with the smaller jaw 
and more rounds or the one with the mean looking grumpy yeah, this one's got more character so then what we want to do is now the eyes um, let's go ahead and select the sphere and make a copy of it this is going to represent the the spheres eye if you like and what I'm going to do is go ahead and clone this instead of shift and drag I'm just going to clone it and I'm going to increase the percentage by I don't know 100 and th two, three, something like that two okay and I'm going to go ahead and isolate this selection isolate okay then what we're going to do because it was a box, its pivot point is not at the its center. So I'm going to put its pivot point to the center of the box. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, um, detach half, or not even half, a little bit. Less than half detach, which is over here. Detach this. And move these to open them a tiny bit for an opening for the eye and if I was to end isolate then there's the other sphere in already inside of that actually I might make this slightly smaller so 98 percent uh, and then so imagine if this was white then that was how the eyes would look like what I would also do here is go ahead and attach come to the poly um, attach all three together and then I would Apply a FFD three by three, and I'll just move these around a little bit to get a to get rather a um, randomized shape. So let's look at this from the top. Poly. That's oops, that's a little bit too big. Scale it down. Bring it here. Get it from the front. Okay, too big. We rotate it up a little bit. And let's go ahead. And mirror it with a copy. Put it on the other side. Maybe make this one slightly smaller or so. Okay. Excellent. Now, as for the legs, let's get another copy of this. Bring it over here. Now, considering that this is going to be the leg, I'm going to put a FFD 3x3, three three, uh, make this part quite flat. Um, looking at the concepts, th this part is meant to get round, this part's more flattish. Um, I'll do this actually this time, convert that to the poly. What I'll probably do, ooh, actually looking at this from the top, it looks really wrong. So always check in different angles as well. So let's go ahead and make that like this. That sounds about, nah, that's fine. And let's go ahead and grab a polygon or four polygons even and extrude that up and move this extrusion some around there for example add a few connections in between like so go ahead and grow this to there ish I think and get a FFD 3x3 three three maybe move the points around there actually do I want it to yeah I want it this way
Okay. That's gonna go inside there. I think I've made the legs a bit too too tall. I actually wanted intended initially to have very very short legs for the um, for the turtle. So that's what we're going to do here. We're gonna have very 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 short legs for him because that's the idea in my concept as well. Very big shoes, very short legs. So put that there. Okay, excellent. Let's go ahead and place that in there. We don't really need to att attach this, no one's gonna notice. Um, let's go ahead and rotate that a little tiny bit this way. Okay, let's put the pivot point of this to the center of the object. So pivot point to center on all axes, okay and do a mirror with copies excellent oops okay select these and push them back um maybe the ones at the back could be slightly smaller oh yeah, just from there they're gonna they're gonna hit each other uh, once the character starts walking. So what I'll do is I'll just put a E50 and these uh, two by two will be fine. Just, oops, grab those and move them down a little bit. I actually think um, that's how I should have the two front ones as well. So just put those over here okay okay excellent that's it okay just want to be very quick so that's the old one that I had I might actually save this uh, save as uh, desktop uh, temporary files character tutorial call this uh, model oops cap lock model and score zero one Press OK and delete this and this and this and save this again as O2. What we want to do, attach everything together, is so go ahead and attach the eyes, all the legs, the teeth, etc. Everything. Excellent. And what we want to do is go ahead and check to see whether or not we have anything more than four poly uh, four edges so selection four give me anything more than four give me anything less than four give me equals to four everything this is fantastic everything's equal in this model and that's what you want to make sure your model uh, is like um i want to put the pivot point to the center of the object however i want the pivot point to be at the base of the shoe so i'm going to snap to vert mode and effect pivot Place that, oops, drag that up to somewhere around there, and then turn that off and zero out all of these options so that the character is sitting exactly on the um, on the grid. Fantastic. Right. Technically, the idea right now is to go and unwrap this before we take it into Modbox, but um, I want to show you something. I want this at this stage. Am I recording? half an hour four minutes yes okay so let's go ahead and export this fbx um, test i've already done this as i said i've recorded this tutorial before so i didn't have to write anything for it i'm overwriting my previous file i'm gonna press ok to this and let's go ahead into modbox and there you go you can see i've already done these and uh, let's open the file again this is you want to say this one no Right, I'm getting an error. The error says UV faces crossing tile, etc., and incomplete UV sets. For as long as I only have errors for the UV, it's absolutely fine. It's not a problem. I haven't unwrapped my model yet. Um, but if it says anything like your vert has uh, is connected to more than 16 edges, or there is a end gun, or there's a vert hanging around somewhere, etc., if you get modeling issues, then you have to go back into your smacks and figure out what's wrong uh, i'm going to cancel this actually go back and figure out what's wrong uh and usually you can just go convert this to the whole poly go select polygon mode and go to through the selection and choose anything more than or less than um uh, four 
size and that will uh, point you towards that should in most cases point you towards the correct uh, direction to fix it what I'm going to do this uh, what I'm going to know is stop this tutorial and in the next video we will unwrap the um, the character see you soon